I just finished watching Biden's State of the Union address, and first of all, might have been the best Pfizer commercial that I've ever seen. So seriously, props to whoever was able to get him on whatever that stack was, whatever juice he was on, because that is possibly the best that I have ever seen Biden speak ever. He did a fantastic job. He slurred his words here and there, but nothing like what we've seen when he's kind of off the cuff. And obviously there's reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons is obviously you can prepare for the State of the Union. You can, you know, kind of switch Biden's schedule around. So that's probably what his handlers did. Uh, they can juice him up with whatever they need to juice you up with beforehand. Um, so he came off really strong. And the other big factor was a lot of his talking points were populist talking points that sounded, in some sense, a lot like Donald Trump, which was actually quite hilarious. So regardless of what was true and what was not, the State of the Union speeches normally do one thing. They're about building momentum and building your marketing coalition. And that's really all that matters. And so even though I could dissect each and every talking point, what was a truth, what was a lie. In a sense, that doesn't matter. What matters is Biden won, didn't stumble too bad, and came off confident and strong. He had some points where he was able to make fun of the Republicans in the House and in the Senate, which also made him look really good and made him look very humanized. Things that he doesn't do very well in the day-to-day -day public eye. Uh, the talking points that he gave, I thought, were actually very good. Who did he attack? He attacked big pharma. He attacked big corporations. He talked about lowering drug prices. He talked about canceling student loans. He talked about increased manufacturing, increasing jobs. He talked about fighting China, uh, fighting Iran. Uh, and then, of course, was very pro-Israel. So what's funny is all those talking points that I just mentioned are obvious Republican, conservative, you know, I don't even know if they're just Republican or conservative. You could almost just say typical American grassroots working class talking points. Of course, he got into women's rights, uh, transgender rights, uh, abortion, the recent IVF issue in Alabama, all kind of hot topics, and he even talked about the border. Once again, I know the border bill. I know the border bill's terrible, to ha and we don't even need a border bill. But that's not the point. That's not the point with good propaganda, which is what his State of the Union was. His State of the Union was all about presence and momentum and essentially the world's biggest psyop. So the big question is how many people actually watched it? Uh, and that we'll see tomorrow because I literally just stopped watching it and I was just driving. So I was just listening to it while I was driving. Hence why I'm still in my car. Uh, but that was the biggest thing is how many people actually watched it? Because at the end of the day, when propaganda that good, and I do view his State of the Union, I would classify that as great propaganda. When propaganda is that good, it can only backfire by pissing people off about how unrealistic some of it is. So for your average American who is currently having or has had someone killed by an illegal immigrant, or currently is having to work two jobs, or is currently having their jobs shut down because they're being outsourced, or, once again, if you're Palestinian, big slap in the face to the Palestinian Muslim community, probably be because they're betting that they're still going to vote for him anyway. Biden claimed multiple times how pro-Israel he was and didn't seem to really walk back on his pro-Israel stance uh, at all. Just kind of showing that they don't really care about this issue and it's not a top priority. So big slap in the face to those constituents. Um, so overall... We'll have to see, like, the media will do its thing now where they will take various clips. He had a lot of clippable moments and just kind of broadcast those constantly as much as possible, as much as they can. Uh, and they'll be doing that leading up to whenever the next uh, debates are for both Trump and Biden. So they essentially had to use this moment to create enough media to feed the rest of Biden's campaign. So that's why there was a lot riding on this moment. I wrote that on my Twitter. If he had, you know, slipped up badly or messed up badly or made some bad talking points and kind of started wandering off or even tripped, I think it would have been over. Uh, so his team probably breathed a huge sigh of relief because 
None of that happened, which I think a lot of Republicans obviously wanted that to happen because it would have killed his momentum. So that's my overall review. Well, once again, the point of this video is not to get into, you know, what did he lie about? What was he honest about? He lied about practically everything, but that doesn't matter. All that matters is people's perception and how they feel. And Biden did a good job creating a realm of perception with what he wants to do. The Republicans were kind of a good opposition to that. And then he did a good job presenting it. He sounded strong. He came off strong. And that, at the end of the day, is what matters with stuff like this.